it's a neutral. Ready? Yeah. I wouldn't be anywhere else in the world than here. South Africa is made up of different worlds. You know, it's, it's the first world, it's the third world, it's the fourth world, all in one go. Health and sort of um, well-being has always been a thing that we, we speculate a lot on as a society in general in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially as it concerns traditional knowledge, traditional medicines, mm -hmm. traditions, practices from the past. The Sanger is a huge scientific institute um, in Hinkston, near Cambridge, where people are working on the genome. From research into health, the diversity of human beings across the globe, to looking into humans' very distant past, looking right back to the origins of humankind. I'm an artist based in Lilongwe, born and bred here in Malawi. I think the first surprise is how busy people can be. You know, those doctors, those scientists are so busy, you know, they're always moving up and down. If I look at a doctor, you know, the ratio of people who are sick in the hospitals, it's, it's just very high. It's just very high. I don't, I don't know if these guys rest. It's very challenging and it's very tasking, I think, to be a scientist here. I realized that people who work at Okru, they all have to learn English because a lot of the most recent published uh, researches are in English. And if they want to publish in an international science magazine or anything, then they, they have to write it in English as well. So on top of gaining in-depth knowledge of the subject matter, they also have to learn acquire English. This particular area is studying um, a particular disease which is called meliodosis. In this particular area, in Ubon Ratchatani, um, this disease is one of the main problems that they're studying. As an artist, I'm interested in connectivity, how I fit in the global sense of landscape. I like looking at people and thinking, who are they? Where do they come from? How do they carry on day to day in day to day life? I was always interested in cosmology in terms of how far reaching it is. I mean, literally looking to the edges of the universe. And I think some of the research in Sanger mirrors that because it's looking to the depth of the human being, really. It's um, tracing a human's history right back to the origin of life. I think it's important to be able to make that connection between ourselves and other people, to have a sense of where we fit into, into the grand scheme of our planet and the rest of the universe. Mm -hmm.
First, we are setting up with uh, talk with the scientists to get to know them, what they work, how they work, and how we interesting what they do. And then we can get some idea to get some more information to working on the production as an artistic way. The primary mode of communication is through our bodies, but the other thing is the way that we create the work is called devised theater, which means that it tends to be something that doesn't begin from a, a written script, but it begins from a concept or an idea. Camry actually means Kenya yeah. Medical Research Institute. And we're kind of using these trips as a, an opportunity to do interviews with people in the community and people who are working at Kemri and uh, also to find out what is Kemri, uh, what are they doing, what are they involved in. Mostly it's tropical diseases, very heavy focus on malaria. These little parasites that cause malaria <laughs> also want to survive, yeah. want to push their species ahead. Yeah. So it's like a battlefield between humans yeah. and these little guys. When you read about science, it always seems so clean and crisp and like, you know, people do studies and then they come up with all this like very precise data. And I went and it's like, oh, we don't know. I guess it's interesting to realize how messy it is. Because I work a lot with ideas relating to time, something that I was really drawn to was this idea of genomic archaeology, sequencing DNA to find out people's roots through history, really, to find out where the first humans originated, how they then traversed and journeyed across the planet. We think that we're so different from each other, but in fact we're 99.9999% the same. It's been interesting for us just to listen to the kind of language that scientists use to talk about what they're doing. I mean, we spoke to one woman who's been working with malaria, studying malaria for nine years, and she said that for her, at the end of the day, she finds it quite beautiful, that the disease itself, the way that it mutates inside the cells is quite beautiful. The Africa Center is a space it's quite abstract. Here you have this building that houses world-class scientists. But if you step out of those concrete walls, you get into meeting different communities that are served by the Africa Center. They have an idea what Africa Center does or what Africa Center is trying to do. But my understanding is that they, they don't know how they fit in. You know, they have all the, the data, the scientific data, but you need to see the people, the real people behind those figures. So much has been done. You know, the knowledge, you know, that's being amassed uh, by the, the researchers in the country, that is not shared you know, to the public. If you live here in Africa and you take a scientist uh, to the people, it's always almost, almost impossible because these are two different people. If you go into the community and then you try to tell the people that, look, you're sick because of the small, small germs, and this person has never been to school, it's, it's always very hard to convince, you know, that kind of person. What I've become very interested in is how people interact with animals here, how people consume, and why that puts them at a risk of getting infected with certain disease. I've started looking into communities that they call high-risk cohorts, and it deals with farming, with people's livelihood, so it's kind of sensitive. So it's very interesting to see them like form relationship with local vets and, and you know work through that or like how things get lost in translation or like how much of the culture they really need to know in order to work well with the people. How science interacts with people. Yeah. That's a huge component of what Cambridge is or has got. 
one interview we did with somebody who didn't work for Kemri and his mother was really against uh, researchers or data collecting people coming to her home and she automatically changed her mind the minute her son was employed at Kemri. So it had nothing to do with understanding what was going on. It was just purely based on trust and belief. I find it quite powerful. The first thing that I'm doing in Chikawa is to arrange for an arts festival. So I've been working with a group of uh, 15, uh, 20 women uh, to come up with artworks that would address issues of health and then we'll exhibit them at the arts festival. I've also worked with a group of children uh, from the primary school. So you have people who are zoomed in, you know, very tightly to looking at the cellular or genetic level of the disease. Molecule. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's sort of like it starts scaling back little by little. So going from like looking at just like the cells and the molecules to then looking at the body as a whole. So just a simple image I think that we've been thinking about is just like sort of like starting from here and then <laughs> going back and just really seeing the scale how this particular research center is looking at tropical diseases on such a variety of scales. Science tries, like art, tries to make sense of our space. It makes us look into the future and try to live a better life, and try to live a healthier life, and try to create a better space for the future generation. That's what science does. When you are questioning, exploring, pushing an idea to its breaking point or changing point, that's an action of science, which is the same one I would apply to art. Global health, I think, means just more sharing. And because of technology, we could share it much more efficiently and, and also faster. But global health also means like learning to work with locals because Okru is Oxford University uh, based. So lots of the researchers and the scientists are foreigners. But in order to work successfully here, they have to work with the locals. Something that I found really amazing was the sharing of data. I haven't experienced that in any place, whether that's in art circles or in other scientific circles. Everything just about that they sequence and learn goes online and can be shared by people all over the world. So there's huge questions in terms of who gets access to this data. You know, is it governments, doctors? Do we have access to all of the data about ourselves? They also have to get this kind of information to outside. It means uh, what, whatever you found, you have to take to the real people. Yeah. What fascinates me is the network. It's like the number of people who have to be involved in just in answering these questions and in trying to help each other come up with solutions that are going to keep us as healthy as possible. Is it the same if, if I'm in South Africa? or if I mean here, are the attitudes the same? Can we attain what we call global health? Is it possible? Or is it something that's endemic to a particular country? I'm beginning to believe that a new platforms are being generated now. That is a mishmash of traditional worlds and contemporary worlds kind of fusing. And it's, I think it's happening on so many different levels, in so many different spaces. It's not specifically only Kemri in Kilifi in Kenya. I think you can find it all over the world. There's so much research that has happened, but there's so much we still don't know. We still don't know. From the tiniest organism to, you know, on the highest level of like nations and stuff, you know, People fight for survival. There's like a real sort of like, everything wants to survive. Global health is about empowering people to live a better life. I think that's what human beings, that's how we survive. 
That's how we survive.